previously, I showed you how to install these WLED. These LED strips are amazingly easy to set up, easy to use, and dirt cheap. Well, relatively dirt cheap compared to the Philips Hue, for instance. Today, we're going to take it up a notch. By simply adding a microphone to the setup, these LED strips will react to sound. That's right. Every time there's a hump, there's a bump, a thump, the strip will react accordingly to whatever you want. By the end of the video, we're going to use it as part of a security system. That's right, it's not just for fun and games, it's actually very useful for other purposes. There's two methods that you can use. We're going to start off with the cheapest. This is a really cheap microphone that you can get for about 50 cents. Starting with your LED strip, you have about five wires, okay? With the two separate strands on the LED strip, feed that straight into the 5 volt DC power supply. You'll need about 5 amp for the power supply. For the other three wires, we're going to feed it straight into the ESP32 board. Starting with the ground, we'll go to the ground. With the data, the one that's in the middle, usually green, goes to the G4. Finally, the voltage, usually in red, goes straight into the 5 volts. This 5 volts and the ground will actually feed power straight to the ESP32. As for the microphone, we'll use three wires. From out, we're going to go straight into the GPIO36, or in this case, SP is labeled on the board. Ground will go straight to ground. VCC goes to 3 volts 3. I'm going to be honest with you, this microphone is not reliable. Meaning sometimes when you power it up, it doesn't work. It drove me nuts because I couldn't tell if my wiring is wrong or anything. But it turns out it's the microphone. It's unreliable. And even if it works, sometimes it's too temperamental. Meaning even if there's no noise, it thinks there's noise. And if there's noise, it might not even pick up that noise. That's not good. So here's a diagram if you want something more reliable. This microphone has six wiring. For the LED strip, it's exactly the same. The only difference is for the microphone. As you can see, there are six wires. Yeah, it's a lot. The SD pin goes to G32. Voltage goes straight to the 3 volt 3. Ground goes to ground. LR also goes to ground. WS goes to G15. SCK goes to G14. Installing the firmware onto the ESP32 board is relatively easy. You'll need to use Edge or Chrome. Firefox will not work. So go ahead and open Edge up. Go to this website, install.wled.me. Choose the firmware that you want. In this case, we want Sound Reactive. The latest version as of now is 0.13.4. Before you proceed, go ahead and connect the board to your computer. You'll need a micro USB cable to connect from your computer straight to the ESP32 board. Once you're ready, go ahead and continue. Click on Plane and click on Install. The browser doesn't know which COM port the board is connected to, so go ahead and scroll around until you find something like UART Bridge Controller and then click on Connect. Go ahead and click on Install. Install again. Click on Install. Flashing the firmware onto the board takes about two minutes. Click on Next. Enter your Wi-Fi credentials. Now it's going to connect to your Wi-Fi network. This board is only 2.4 gigahertz. So if you're using something like an Eero, go ahead and disable the 5 gigahertz for this to jump on. See what I mean? It couldn't connect because my network is running both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz and it doesn't know which one to jump into. So let's do it one more time with the 5 gigahertz disabled. Click on connect. I'm going to add it to home assistant. This is totally optional. Click on open link. Click on OK. The host will be the IP address of the ESP32 board. If you're not sure what the IP address of your ESP32 board is on your network, go ahead and use a program like IP Scanner and then scan the whole network. I know mine is 192.168.127 based on this MAC address. The MAC address is imprinted onto your ESP32 board. So once you find the IP address, go ahead and jump to it. We're going to open a browser up and type in the address. By default, you can see all of these tabs right here but I'm going to click on PC mode. That way I can see everything. First, let's click on config. Before we proceed, I should clarify that you should definitely disconnect it from your computer, whether it's a desktop or laptop. 
Go ahead and connect the board to the 5 volt power supply as I showed you earlier in the setup. Once it's booted up and ready, go into LED preferences. When you first start off, you will probably see a little bit of the LED being lit up. Go ahead and play around with the length value, that way the whole strip is lit up. The GPIO is 4 because that's how we wired it according to the diagram I showed you earlier. Go all the way down and click on save when you're ready. Let's go back. Let's go down to sound settings. In this configuration for the cheap mic, we're just going to click on generic analog. The input pin will be 36. These two values you can play around with, but for my settings, I find that 10 and 40 is pretty good. I believe that's the default value, by the way. Click on save. Finally, you can play around with all of these settings. When you see the symbol right here, it means that it will react to sound. Obviously, you can choose the basic effects without any sound reactive, and it will work just fine. Of course, if you just want simplicity, like solid, it will be just one single solid color. By default, when it's power cycle, meaning whenever you plug it into the wall, whenever it gets power, it will show up as a solid color, one solid color on the LED strip. You can go ahead and choose whatever settings that you want, whatever color that you want, and then create a preset. Give the preset a name. For me, I'm going to name it Audio Gravy, so that way when it gets power and when it boots up for the first time, it will load up this setting right here instead of just a boring solid color. Now, if you're using an expensive microphone, go ahead and go into sound settings, change it to generic I2S. The pin will be 32, 15, 14, and then click on save. We're using two totally different strips. This one is the cop strip, so that's why the length is extremely higher because it's much, much more dense. Play around with the settings until all of the strip is lit up. The GPIO is number four, and then go all the way down and click on save. Here's a quick demo of the two microphones in action. The top board has a fancy microphone, while the bottom board has the cheap microphone. Finally, we're going to do something fun. This relates to security. So go into your settings and then go into sync interface. This setting is really interesting because you can put one unit with a microphone in one room and you can put another unit with the LED strip in another room. That way, if there's sound in one room, then you'll see the light reacting accordingly in another room. You don't have to run a huge long wire cable for the microphone. It's all wireless. So if you're doing something like this for security, go ahead and go down to mode for one of the bore, change it to receive. This is the unit that has the LED strip connected, but no microphone. On the other bore, go ahead and go all the way down, and the mode will be transmit. This is the one with the microphone connected, but no LED strip connected. And then click on save for both. Here you can see it in action. This one has the microphone, but no LED strip. The other unit has no microphone, but has the LED strip. My son is going to play a goofy song for you. The fancy microphone is picking up everything and transmitting that signal to the other board, and the other board is reacting accordingly. I hopefully this video helps you on how to set up your own sound reactive WLED strip. I really appreciate you guys subscribing to my channel, liking this video. And thanks for watching.